Bet you didn't expect this. Yeah, welcome back to the back seat. The back seat racer. That's what I should have called this, really. In all honesty, this is what I should have called the series back in the day. Um, so a bunch of people commented on the reviewing the reviews video that they wanted to see another race review. And I'm sitting back like that's the last thing on planet Earth that I want to do. That's the last thing that I want to do. So you know what I decided to do? I decided to do it. So here we are, back in the back seat. What do I have to say about this weekend of racing that I actually sat through the entirety of for some inexplicable reason? Well, let's start with where we should always start, which is the fact that this track needs to be bulldozed. It needed to be bulldozed five years ago, but that doesn't change the fact that it still needs to be bulldozed. The truck series race happened. It was very close to being good. And by very close, I mean extremely far from being good. That was not a good race at all. Absolutely fuck all was transpiring through the entirety of this event. I... It was just another race. I mean, it was just... It really did set the tone for the weekend, though. Just absolutely nothing happening. And the leader being untouchable. That leader being Kyle Busch. Oh, my goodness. All these fucking years later, and he's still running these truck series races to gain him absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of anything. P, he's going to be remembered if he never drove a single Xfinity or truck race past the year 2006. He would be remembered as one of the greatest drivers of all time. And yet for some reason, he just feels the need to continue running all these races that benefit him in absolutely no conceivable way whatsoever. I mean, at one uh, uh, at one point, you could have said back in the day, oh, he runs all these truck races because he won't get sponsorship for his other trucks if he doesn't. And you know what? Okay, that's a pretty decent argument. KBM doesn't exist anymore. What's the excuse now? Huh? What's the excuse now? Pray tell. Why is he running all these truck races? Is it because he's washed and can't actually win in the Cup Series? Because he kind of sucks ass this year. I mean, RCR as an organization kind of sucks this year. But that's always been the case except for 2022. So, you know, you know, you know, it's strange, you know. It's very strange, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Um, Corey Heim is still a non-driving asshole. He still has the absolute mental capacity of a peanut because pff, at the end of the race, he decided, oh, I'm going to run as hard as I can for P2. And then he lost half a second to the winner. And at that point, I was like, good. You don't fucking deserve to win this race, Heim, if you're going to drive like an actual inbred, Okay. He fucking deserved to lose. I don't know who had the best truck. Does it even fucking matter, honestly? No one deserved to win that race. That race shouldn't have happened because this track should be a parking lot. The Xfinity Series race happened. There was very little racing this weekend, by the way. You know what this weekend could have used? An IndyCar race. Not at Texas anywhere else but if they had put the indy cars on in texas there may have been some fucking passes anyway the point that i'm trying to make is that the xfinity race happened um it was boring as well just like the truck series race um all guy are led both the first two stages and i was sitting there like yeah good for him he's not gonna win the race at no point no point during the entire event did i even think for a millisecond that Algar was going to win. I was more focused on the battle for a second. I was happy to see Chandler up there until Sammy Smith drove up his own ass like he always does. Sammy Smith has to be the most fraudulent winner. Now, let's just say the most fraudulent one-time Xfinity Series winner. Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, he's garbage. My goodness gracious. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It was a complete fucking fluke. It was just Ryan Truex being himself and Phoenix being a garbage track that allowed him to win last year. I don't know how else. He's got the uh, racing acumen of Michael Annette. Like, he, the, it really does. Racing really does run in the veins of that family. Mike, Michael Annette is like his uncle or something. And you can tell. You can tell. You can tell. 
Um, nothing happened in the entire Xfinity race. It was drop dead boring. Allgaier was the dominant car until the second half of the race. So it was basically just any other Xfinity race. Um, he was doing everything in his power to throw away the race before the caution that changed everything came out. And the entire time I'm just sitting there like, can you like, the pedal on the right is the gas, Justin. He had a three second gap off the pit lane and he was doing everything in his power to throw away that race before Leland Honeyman, the man's got a brain made out of honey. Because this motherfucker was trying to race the leader whilst being two laps down. Y'all gonna blame that wreck on Allgaier when this motherfucker that's two laps down is trying to race the leader of the event like he's battling in second place. What a fucking moron. Driving a garbage bag car that probably is like 20th place at best, but you know generational talent Leland Honeyman found himself 30th two laps down racing the leader for absolutely no fucking reason so yeah that changed everything except it shouldn't have Kligerman stayed out for some inexplicable reason it was pure chaos at that point and then Ryan Sieg drove from fifth place on the restart to the lead and it was like, um, excuse me, what, what, what's he doing up here? Why is he driving like it's 2021? Has he actually got a car underneath him? Did Stuart Haas finally decide to drop the 15 car and actually start giving some, you know, quality ingredients over to the 39 camp? Sugar spice and everything nice coming together to make a Psyaps 39 that can actually contend for a victory? What is this pure nonsense? What is this actual, like, clown show theatrics? Well, it was all for nothing because even though C got the lead in the most spectacular fashion you could imagine, the caution came out and he had a great reaction restart and he drove off to a two second lead with 10 laps to go and let me tell you he's still fucking lost he's still fucking lost eat your heart out atlanta by the way because when when in the case of atlanta which i will go out and say is a terrible race that sets an awful precedent that will essentially make it so that in the next five years, every mile and a half track will be converted to an Atlanta-style racing package because of that race. Good job, everyone involved in that, by the way. But um, this was a natural photo finish that if Ryan Sieg had a single ounce of talent in his body, it would never have been manifested. That was pure nonsense. That was on, that was 2003 Darlington on steroids. There is absolutely no reason that Sam Mayer should have even been in contention, let alone got the win. Like, for fuck's sake, dude, how do you lose a second and a half lead in three laps at Texas? I mean, it's been done before. It's been done before in the last good race at this fucking facility. But, you know, you know, it's still a little bit on the difficult side to pull off. You have to really throw away a fucking event. You really have to just give up if you're going to throw away a second lead in three laps. Because that's what Ryan Sieg managed to do. And I don't even feel sorry for him. There is no excuse for him to have lost that race. None. Absolutely none. No excuse. So I don't even feel sorry for his bitch ass. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, then the cup race happened. That was also drop dead boring. Um, every car that was faster than the winner got fucked over in some manner. Which was funny at the time until I realized what it was setting up. Um, yeah, basically everything that could have gone wrong in this race did go wrong. There was a caution that basically handed Elliott 20 positions. There was a caution that basically handed Logano good track position. There was a bunch of incidents that handed the fucking gingerbread man himself in the 45 car a guaranteed win. Until, like, and the funniest thing about it is that try as they may, try as they fucking may, I am the... the you know, I on this channel, I always love to come on in these race reviews back in the day and shit on the pit crews. Nah, 
My favorite team in NASCAR is the 23XI pit crew. They have been absolutely vital in saving some of these races. I got to hand it to them. It is impressive. They are on the level of Truex's pit crew in 2016. They are that bad. And they are my favorite team on the entire grid. I tune into these events. If I could get a pit crew shirt from the 23XI team, that'd be the next best thing to like, you know, the, uh, a golden, you know, chalice. The holy grail. The holy grail of NASCAR merch is a 23XI pit crew shirt. Let me tell you. Um, so this race sucked on a multitude, for a multitude of reasons, on a multitude of levels and for a multitude of reasons. Texas is a fucking garbage bag of a track. Holy mother of God, they can't even drive on the fucking thing. McDowell, just on the outside line, dies because he dared to actually try on a restart. Hamlin on the outside line for the first time all season. Hamlin did drive like a cunt in this race. He did not do something stupid. He did not cost someone the win by driving like an asshole or brazenly breaking the rules of the fucking race. For the first time all season, Hamlin drove like a sensible motherfucker. And this is the thanks that he gets. This is the thanks that he gets. A shitbag track where you can't even fucking drive on it. Fun times, man. Fun times. It's really cool how this track is actually the worst thing to ever be created by human hands. In, in all honesty, I have to give it up. A round of applause to fucking the entire SMI company. The entire conglomerate. You did it. You somehow managed to create the absolute worst racing facility on the face of of the fucking planet. Kentucky Motor Speedway is in awe of your shit baggery. You have somehow managed to create the perfect formula for the absolute shittiest racing and the absolute shittiest facility. There are no lengths that this track won't go to to produce Shit bag race after shit bag race. If it's not tires blowing constantly for no reason in 2022, if it's not everyone and their mother wrecking and getting concussed because you can't design a fucking track that's more than a singular lane, if it's not fucking Ryan Sieg having to blow a two second advantage. In the Xfinity series. <laughs> to create an actual finish worth talking about. Like it's not the track. That created the great finishes in the 2020 Xfinity race. And the 2024 Xfinity race at Texas. It was the sheer lack of, of ability to compete. That caused that. Because none of those finishes should have happened. If the drivers in the lead in the closing laps had even a modicum of talent, those finishes never would happen. Okay? And then and every other and every other race would just be the fucking other races where people just wreck for no reason because the track was designed by an infant and just green white checker after green white checker, where if you have the lead out of either corner, the race is already over. Congratulations, SMI. You have failed on a level previously unimaginable. This is next fucking level. This is, you know, forget 40 chess. This is ninth dimensional DMT riddle brain. An entire scope incomprehensible to the human mind level failure. That's how bad this track is. I would like nothing more than for the, uh, for, you know, the SMI organization to, um, rename this track Palestine so that a bunch of war-torn countries in the Middle East 
can drone strike it on a daily basis. And that is not a political statement. That is not a political statement. My opinion on Israel versus Palestine is I hope they blow each other up so we can just get it over with and move on with our lives. That's my opinion on the subject. But hey, if they renamed it Palestine, at least they wouldn't get any US dollar investments. Maybe then it would go out of business and we wouldn't have to deal with this shit anymore. But that is too much to ask for. If anything, we're going to end up going back to having the all-star race here once North Wilkesboro gets a points-paying event in a couple of years. That'll be a grand old time, won't it? Anyway, on the subject of this race, it was awful from start to finish. Everything that was stupid that could have happened in this race did happen. There was a loose wheel. There was a bunch of wrecks that shouldn't have happened if the track was actually fucking designed by an actual human being. You know. But through it all, after everything, I can't even be mad about the outcome. Because at least it wasn't Reddick. Thank y'all so much for watching a throwback video to the classic race reviews format. I do not plan on making any more of these. This was just a fun video. In theory, in theory, this was just a fun video. Um, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but I went on Etsy. I went on Etsy and I found this. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that just the funniest shit that you've ever seen? This is basically me. This is me every, all three races. For the entirety of all three races, this is me. And it's directed towards SMI. I, I think Bruton Smith is dead and I don't know what his son's name is. I don't want to sully the name of Bruton Smith because I think he was just bad at investing and a bad parent. But that doesn't make him a bad person. Because his son is a moron, you know. I don't even know what his name is. Denny Hamlin dragged him on Twitter a couple of days ago. And I still don't even know what his name is. So, anyway. Thanks for watching. Bye.